Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, and you want to look like Thor. Don't you? Good news, we wrote up a superhero workout where you can look just like Thor. Pause. Why would you want to do this? Well, I've been known on this channel to do a little bit of critiquing of Hollywood training, you could say. Some of it is hilarious, some of it falls on deaf ears, but I will say that not all Hollywood training for celebrities to want to look like superheroes is bad, but a lot of it is just bunk. Half of these workout videos, just random nonsense that's hard. Ugh. It was only a matter of time until the began. Peak nonsense. Where the do these people come from? Uh... So if you're like, damn, I kind of want to look like Thor, you Google some things, you could find some videos that are less than helpful or find a whole lot of nothing at all. So what if you actually want to look like your favorite Hollywood star or your favorite movie superhero or some combination of the two? Well, let's take a look at the challenge and see if we can't figure out a workout together, me being all PhD of sports science and shit like that, help you along to look like well, maybe even Thor himself. In the comics, Thor's height and weight have varied over the years depending on the writer and artist, but he is typically portrayed as standing around 6'6 six, six to 6'9, six, holy fuck, and weighing between 240 to 640 pounds, depending on whether he is in his mortal form or in his S-Guardian form. So now I guess the workout really should try to make you look like Hafdor Julius Bjornsson, which really is his name is Thor, and he roughly meets those metrics. And I was going to say he's mortal, but is that really true? Who are you to put that to the test? Fuck that. No one's weighing 440 anytime soon. And I sure as shit, most of you probably, though you think the mountain from Game of Thrones looks very cool, maybe not exactly what you want to look like. Let's scale the shit down to semi-realistic. Just look at Chris Hemsworth for that role. What did Thor look like when he was acted by Chris Hemsworth? Super good looking. Dreaminess aside, seems like a lot of authorities say he's roughly six foot three and 215 pounds for that role. Okay, that's way more realistic and also pretty fucking cool. That's dope. That's a hell of a look. And okay, those are cool dimensions, but we can't really change your height. We can give you weight gain or weight loss over time, but during that weight gain or weight loss, we also want you to be shaped like Thor. And that's what this workout is gonna be about, getting you to be shaped like him. And so we'll need to know which muscles really stand out on Thor and which muscles are like, oh, they're nice, but they're not exactly the stars of the show. So let's take a look at that. What muscles are we going to be emphasizing? To me, and I've looked at a lot of male physiques over the years, my psychiatrist says too many. For Chris Hemsworth in this role, especially in the uh, latest Thor, as of this creation of this PowerPoint, the movie Love and Thunder, in that movie Love and Thunder, he was by far his most jacked. I mean, holy crap. He looked ridiculous. And in that whole Greek God scene where he was all tied up or whatever, it sounds like I'm describing a different kind of movie. He just looked mega Jack. Now, of course, there's some CGI involved, but what stood out to me most about him, and actually in a variety of his roles as Thor, was first of all, his back. Like you could see a motherfucker latch through the front. That's dope, he's got a big back. And that's not something you expect from Hollywood. Another one is his shoulders, big, round, capped off, and big ass arms. If you look at his pecs, they're there, they're cool, but nothing too crazy. You look at his abs, they're dope, but nothing psychotic. And legs, yeah, I mean, he has them. And they're muscular, but nothing to write home about. So to me, looking like Thor is about having a big ass back, big ass shoulders, and big ass arms. In this program that we're gonna write out for you guys that you could do by yourself, the other muscles will be trained, the major muscle of the body, but with much less emphasis. So we're really gonna be focusing on back, shoulders, and arms, so you can look like Thor and finally get the Natalie Portman of your dreams. Isn't that right, Scott the Video Guy? Would you look like Thor to get a little of her thunder and lightning? Scott has a bit of an obsession. Talk about that in our spare time. Now, getting a superhero physique takes serious work. So the plan that we're gonna outline for you is gonna be a five day a week plan. Can you condense it into a three or four day a week plan? Sure, will it work as well? Not exactly as well. I just wanna get you guys the real real to get you started and that means you're in for some work. So to the plan, what does our plan look like? Well, here you go. And you don't have to remember all this or write it down because it's going to be visually displayed for you. You can simply pause at any time and screenshot with your phone. There are going to be five days, and generally the structure is we train back, shoulders, and arms, our priority muscles, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or any way you wanna do the five days throughout the week. It doesn't much matter as long as 
or sequencing it in this similar fashion. So if you want to do Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, no big deal. And then Tuesday, Thursday, we're going to train kind of the rest of the major parts of the body, chest, legs, and abs. So on Monday or day one, rather, we start with barbell bent over rows. These build slabs of thick beef all around your back. And they also hit your traps and your spinal erectors. So when you turn to the side with Mjolnir the hammer, people are like, damn, that's a cool hammer. But then others are like, damn, spinal erectors are big. I don't know which one I'm afraid of more, the infinite immortality hammer thingy or the fact that it's salamis for his erectors. Next, you will do underhand pull-ups. Underhand pull-ups are dope because they really get your lats going, get you that width and they hit the lats from the top to bottom. So they get that poofy V taper that Thor has, tasty, I know. But also because they're underhand, they hit your biceps a lot as well. And that's really cool because you're gonna want big arms. Next, you go on to shoulders and you do dumbbell lateral raises, great shoulder movement, especially do it slow and control with good technique. And you're gonna follow this up with dumbbell bicep curls. For convenience, we could have picked any other kind of bicep curl. The type of curl you do doesn't matter a ton, but if you got the dumbbells for laterals, if you're in the dumbbell area, sometimes you use similar weights for them, you're already halfway there, super convenient. Last exercise in this day is gonna be the triceps overhead easy bar extension. You can use a straight bar for this, but the easy bar is a little bit preferred because it's generally uh, easier on the elbows and it makes the movement feel a little bit more comfortable and lets you connect mind muscle to your triceps a ton without involving your shoulders as much. So great movement there. You're gonna start the plan, and we'll talk about progression later, with roughly two sets, two working sets after warmups of all of these exercises. And you're gonna shoot for roughly 10 to 15 repetitions per set. Very general formula. It's gonna stay the same for every single day of this plan. Next, day two, chest, legs, and abs. This is like a Tuesday or whatever. This isn't your high priority day. We'll talk about later how that's gonna shift to become not so difficult compared to the other days, but you still gotta put in the work. Because remember, Thor isn't just shoulders, back, and arms. He does have abs. He does have a chest. He does actually walk on two legs that aren't the skinniest things in the world. We're not talking about Captain America here. Ooh, ouch, that hurts. He does kind of have peg legs though, huh? We are going to start with high bar squats, deep, strict with the chest up to fry the quads and get the glutes and get the adductors and a little bit more lower back work. And believe it or not, if you pinch your shoulders back to create that shelf, it even makes your traps more jacked, which is really good. Then because you're in the rack already, you can do high bar good mornings. These hit your glutes and your hamstrings, even your calves a little bit. They hit it a ton. Your lower back, your spinal erectors get even more hypertrophy. Great exercise. So it's not just hams, but it's a ton of other stuff as well, which is awesome. Then you're going to go and do incline dumbbell presses, full range of motion, super big stretch at the bottom with a nice pause and then coming back up. These will develop your chest to a really great extent. Also work on the front of your delts, which we don't really train in the other days much. And a little bit of extra tricep work never hurt anyone. Grandma used to do it. Great grandma used to do it. You're going to get even bigger triceps from this. And lastly, we're going to finish up with slant board sit-ups because abs are a thing. And if you train your abs in the hypertrophy rep range, they will grow. They will pop out more. And then you put that suit of armor on like Thor, they're still going to pop through that shit. And bitches be like, damn, Poppy, where them abs do? And you're like, I don't, I'm not from the Bronx. I don't know what you're saying. Sets of 10 to 15 reps. We're going to start with two sets. We'll talk about later where we progress from there. Day three, we had a day break. Other muscle groups were trained. Now it's day three, we're back to back shoulders and arms again, this time in a different order, because this time the back is still maybe a little bit beat up from Monday. So we're gonna put back a little bit down into more of the middle of the program. And we're gonna start with shoulders, shoulders fresh, because last time they weren't trained fresh. Cable cross body lateral raises, awesome. Especially if you really reach across and let your side and rear deck get stretched for a few seconds at the bottom of the movement, come back up to the top. It's a really awesome exercise. You're going to need a cable station. Do one arm, rest for 10 seconds, do the other arm, rest for 10 seconds or even 30 seconds and repeat. Barbell upright rows. Any grip that you like that's comfortable for you is really good. Remember to always lead with your elbows and even consider pausing at the top, but definitely control that eccentric on the way down. This hits your side delts, even your rear delts. It hits your traps and it hits your biceps and your forearms a little bit, giving you more of that Thor-esque look. Next, we're done with shoulders. We go on to chest supported rows. 
more back work, but it's easier now and not a ton of it. It's the only back exercise for today because the back was pretty well cooked from last time. Hit it still a little bit today. We'll save more back work for Friday. Easy bar bicep curls, great exercise. You can definitely use a straight bar if you want, but the easy bar, generally a little more comfy on the elbows. And remember, full range of motion and slowly control that descent in order to get the most muscle, the lowest risk of injury. Lastly, cable tricep pushdowns. Good technique here, moving mostly at the elbow, not any other joints. Slow control on the way up, pause at the top a little bit, and then come back down for a full lockout in most cases. All of these exercises done for at the beginning in the first week for two sets of roughly 15 to 20 repetitions. So you'll notice that's a little higher than the first days that we were training with. Next, day four, chest, legs, and abs again. You're gonna start with machine flat chest press. We started a Tuesday with, uh, we had an incline press for chest, but this time we have a flat press to make sure that the whole pec is trained throughout the week. You're gonna move into hanging leg raises. If you're not ultra super strong, you can just do hanging knee raises, but if you're super strong and can challenge yourself in 10 to 15 rep range, then you can do your straight leg and raise it all the way up and slowly control on the way down. Dumbbell lunges, they hit the quads, they hit the adductors, they hit the glutes. They're amazing for whole leg development. So we're gonna do those. Then, still dumbbells. You can do dumbbell stiff-legged deadlifts. Actually trains a lot of the back again. Tons of glute stimulus, an amazing hamstring stimulus too, with a little bit of calves thrown in there, why not? You finish off with those. Great all-around workout. Two sets of 10 to 15 reps. And look at that. You're on to the last day, Friday. This is a meaty day, why? We have a lot of work to do to round out our program and you have two days of rest after this. So we can work a little bit harder because you have two days off. Amazing. You're gonna start with pull-ups, probably overhand pull-ups to get that gnarly lat width. Full range of motion all the way down, pause at the bottom, stretch, and no weird leg wiggliness to get yourself up over the bar at the top. Just touch your chin to the bar, roughly so, and you're good to go. Next, inverted rows. You can do these in a Smith machine. You can do these in a power rack, but it's basically like, what a skull crusher is to an inverted skull crusher. The row is to an inverted row. You basically just let your body weight do the talking. There are a variety of places to touch on your chest or tummy. I would just play around. I would say start this exercise touching right at or just underneath the nipple line. And if you wanna to touch to the tummy and it feels better for your back, or if you wanna to touch a little higher on the chest and it feels better that way, there's no wrong answers. Just pick a consistent technique after a session or two, stick with that for a few months, and then you can change it later. Next up are cable bicep curls. These can be done with a straight bar, but if you want better wrist and, and elbow comfort, you can do them with an easy bar. As usual, slowly eccentric and do a full range of motion. Then set up an incline bench and do dumbbell incline curls. These are gnarly as shit. You won't need a lot of weight for them, but make sure on the descent, you're slowing the weight down and reaching as far back behind yourself as you can to put that bicep under an incredible stretch because that's the part that grows it the most. Skull crushers afterwards don't actually crush your skull. You can come down in skull crushers to touch your throat, keep your elbows in, come down slow, you can touch your chin, you can touch your nose, you can touch where your eyes are, the bridge of your nose, you can touch your actual skull, or you can even touch the bar behind yourself to the actual bench. There's no wrong answers, just different variations. So your call which one you like. Then afterwards, we continue on with triceps and you do cable overhead extensions. Pro tip, take the cable rig and set it up to just below shoulder height so you can pick up the cable really close to you, arrange it behind and go. You don't necessarily wanna set it up at the bottom and then have to fucking power clean the whole thing while you twist. Fuck that, I'm not actually Thor, I can't do shit like that. And then lastly, since you're at the cable station anyway, cable upright rows. You can use any kind of grip you want, just make sure it's comfortable for your shoulders. And the cue on the movement is to take your elbows and reach high into the sky for every single repetition. You do all of these for two sets of 10 to 15 repetitions. It's gonna be a hell of a workout, but it's Friday. Then you go to the club, you dress as Thor, and well, you know the rest. Lots of women pay attention to you. Now, next part, how do you progress through the plan? Yes, I just described week one, dope, but how do you actually make progress? Well, you start with picking a weight that gets you into that 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 rep range. And then you first week, two sets, two working sets, shoot roughly three reps in reserve. So basically leave like about three reps on the take. So as soon as the weight really starts to get heavy and you start to slow down with it, stop, cut it right there, write your reps down and you're good to go. Four Tuesdays and Thursdays, they are not our priority days. You're going to stick to two sets throughout the entire program, never moving up in sets, but you're either gonna add five pounds to the lift or a repetition to the lift 
every time that you can for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are back, shoulder, and arm days, the priority days, the really, really super important ones. You definitely want to add either five pounds or a repetition to every single work set that you can throughout that entire program. But if the exercise wasn't super challenging last time, the target muscle wasn't sore the next time you had to train it and it wasn't really tired and you feel like, man, I could definitely do more of this, feel free to add a set per session to just one of the exercises. For example, if on, well, let's look through the program really quick. Let's say on day three, you get to doing cable cross body lateral raises and barbell upright rows. And you notice that from the dumbbell laterals that on Monday, you didn't really get tired your muscles feel fresh, you either got sore or they healed or you never even got sore. And you honestly felt like on Monday, you're like, man, that wasn't a lot of shoulder training. I can challenge myself, I'm well within, then totally next Monday, instead of two sets, now you could do three sets of dumbbell lateral raises and so on and so forth. On the other hand, if let's say you are doing dumbbell bicep curls on day one and your biceps are still sore on day three when you do your bicep work there, then you know it's probably a good idea for you to just stick to the same number of sets because overlapping soreness or if the muscle is still really fatigued and you can't really do a great job with the lift and hit a little mini PR, it's totally enough volume and you don't need to do more. More sets are better when you can clearly recover from them. And more sets are worse when you cannot recover from them. It's not a winner take all. It's not as much as you can grab. It's that optimal fine line of just enough to make a really good pump, really good soreness, really good fatigue and heal on time for next time. If you're getting that, don't change a thing. If it's too easy, add a few sets here and there. If it's too hard, you can even take sets away. Every four to eight weeks, you will become tired. You will be unable to make five pound or one rep progressions anymore. And that's when you take a deload week which means you just take an easy ass week where you only go to the gym twice. You go to the gym on Monday, you go to the gym on Thursday, and you do the same workout you typically went on Monday and the same one you went on Thursday. However, you take all of the weights, sets, and reps in those workouts and you drop them by half. That's right. So if you're doing 100 pounds for four sets of 10, now you're doing 50 pounds for two sets of five. Easy as hell, right? That's the whole point. It's called recovery training, helps you heal completely so that after that deal of week, you are just raring to go. You can't wait. And then when you come back, you can repeat that program again and continue on just like that. After about eight to 16 weeks of total training, definitely deload again and then kind of see how you look. If you want to continue to become more Thor-like and you really love the plan, you can just repeat this program again, keeping the exercises you really like that don't feel stale. The exercises you didn't like so much or that feel stale, choose analogs to replace them with. So if you've got barbell upright rows, you can replace with dumbbell or with cable or face pulls, some exercise for that same muscle group. Replace that, make your new plan and continue along. And then you hit it again, or you get bored of trying to look like Thor, You've already been swimming in uh, in female <laughs> genital excrement. Good God, it came out weird. And you've had too much. No more ladies, no more Thor. And then you can try another program, no big deal. But eight to 16 weeks of this should really make a dent in your appearance. Now, if you want some help with organizing your training, we do have the RP Hypertrophy app. And if you take the app and you put all of the lifts into the plan, it can take care of all of the rest for you. You can rate all of your workouts. It automatically assigns volumes. It automatically progresses your loads. You check in all of your lifts. It's amazing. I use it every single time that I work out. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. It's less than a dollar a month in most cases or roughly about that. Holy crap, to look like Thor, that's easy money spent. You don't have to use the app. It'll just make things easy. There is a link in the description to sign up. Pro tip, once you download the app, if you hit save to home screen on your phone, an app icon appears on your home screen and it works just like every other app on your phone. Next, if you need help with your diet, we have two options that I would generally recommend. If you're on the skinnier side of things and you need to realize Thor is a lot bigger than you, eight to 16 weeks of the program, you wanna do a slow gain with minimal fat gain. I would recommend a 250 calorie daily surplus, looking to gain about two pounds a month. That'll add some slab of muscle, probably burn some fat in most cases, or at least not add any, it'll get you well on your way. On the other hand, option two is for eight to 16 weeks, you do a slow fat loss with also a bit of muscle gain in there. Like if you look like Loki, you need the gain plan. If you look like Fat Thor, you need the fat loss plan. 500 calorie daily deficit. Try to get a step tracker and get your steps to about 10 to 12,000 steps per day on average, and then look to lose about four pounds per month. You do that for eight to 16 weeks, you'll look hella different. And shoulders, arms, back, and all the other muscles will grow substantially. You're gonna reveal your more Thor-like physique, no problem. In either case, whichever diet you use, 
give a consideration to trying the RP Diet Coach app, which is available on the Google Play Store and in the uh, Apple Store. And this app, can you just put in your goals? It lets you time all of your meals. It tells you exactly what to eat and when. It's gonna take care of everything for you. So you could just practice throwing Mjolnir and seeing if it comes back. Bing. Whoosh. Bing. And if it doesn't come back, I suppose that means you're not worthy or it killed someone and is lodged inside them. Anyway, folks, let me know if you found this workout helpful or useful. If you'd maybe like to see some other superhero workouts, the Hulk would be like eight days of training because goddamn. But in any case, let me know if you have comments or questions in the comments section and I'll see you there. Peace.